welcome to the edit page. This is where the magic happens. This is where you're going to spend a lot of time cutting your scenes together, reworking scenes until they're serving story. They're serving all the work you did in development and pre-production and production. In addition to picture editing, you're also going to do some initial sound design, music editing, stuff like that. So without further ado, let's take a look. First, let's do this again. Go back to workspace and then reset UI layout just to make sure we're seeing the same thing. And now let's go through this page beginning with the upper left. The very first icon up here shrinks this area and lets your timeline be larger on the screen. And then we have Media Pool Effects Index Sound Library. The one that's highlighted in white is the one you're viewing right here. And if you click on the one that's highlighted in white, it just takes it away and the entire space is consumed with the views. So let's go back to Media Pool. So this is the same Media Pool that we saw on the media page. And you can import media here just like you do on the media page. If we didn't have the media page, we could still do everything we need to do on the edit page. We can browse through our bins. We can right click, create new bins. We can be in a bin, hit command I and import footage, etc. The next option here is effects. So this is anything from fades to titles, etc. And then we have index, which is a lot of information about the clips that are in the current timeline. For example, if I click on one of these, it takes me to that edit point. This is something I typically never use, but just so you know what it is. And then we have sound library. So Resolve has this really cool feature where you can import WAV files from your computer, whether it's Foley that you've recorded or sound effects from a sound library. You can import all those from your hard drive and then search for them or preview them here. So that's really nice. So I'm just going to leave it at media pool right now. And I'm going to click this little monitor to expand the timeline. Now, moving over to the right here, we have a source viewer and a timeline viewer. The default is source on the left, timeline on the right. And this is unique because the media page and the cut page only have a single viewer. The dual viewer on the edit page is super handy. For example, if I click on a clip and I have it here in my source viewer, I can also see my timeline over here. So I'm watching the movie and I'm like, okay, I want to put it right here. And then as we've talked about in the production intro course, I can just drag that over and say insert, overwrite, etc. Now, if for any reason you don't see two viewers here, it could be because inspector is activated or metadata. So if you see one that's white, just click on it and then you'll see both viewers. Now below the viewers, you're going to see icons for things that you're already familiar with, at least some of them. We've got the default selection mode. And then we've got trim mode, dynamic trim mode, the blade tool. And then we've got insert, overwrite, and replace. Next, we've got snapping. What is that? Well, with snapping enabled, if I click close to an edit point, it snaps to it. If I disable that and click close to an edit point, it's going to put the playhead exactly where I clicked. But with snapping on, it's going to go to that close edit point. Now, if I click in the middle, that's different. But if I'm close to an edit point, it just goes right to it. I typically have this off. And then linked selection means if I have audio and video synced together and I click on one of them, by default, it clicks both of them. I have this disabled as well because I often want to work with my audio or video separately and I can't do it that way very easily. So I just disable that and now if I click on one of them, it highlights just that part of the clip. So I can change my audio if needed, remove it, whatever, without affecting the other part of the clip. And then position lock. By default, if I have my select tool enabled and I click on a clip, I can click and drag it around. And since I have linked disabled, the audio and video can be separated. With position lock enabled, that's not possible. So if there's any time you want that select mode default to be disabled, that's how you do it. Flagging allows us to identify all the areas in a timeline where we've used a certain clip. So for example, hat pickup take one, I know these are the same clip. But if I want to identify all the places on a larger timeline, I can simply click on one of the clips, choose the down arrow for the color I want, let's say purple, and then you can see it marks all of them in purple. And I can clear that if I want to clear it. And then markers allows me to just set a marker on the timeline so I can choose whatever color. And then there you can see that marker. So that can be handy for various reasons. And these icons let you view the entire timeline zoom in a little bit, etc. We've looked at that already. Cool. So now let's go back to the very top again, but over to the right. First, we have Mixer. 
which opens up a nice tool for working with audio. So if I hit play, I'll see my audio levels here. Not even a real gun. <laughs> and I can add effects, etc. So some of the things that we can do on the Fairlight page, we can also begin to do right here on the edit page. And then clicking on metadata will not take Mixer away. If I want the Mixer to go away, I just click on it again. Metadata shows me information about the clip that I have selected. And then Inspector allows me to do a lot with the clips, both video and audio. So for example, with Inspector, I could zoom, move it around, I could crop it. And there's a lot you can do in Inspector. Basically, anytime you want to access more editing tools on an audio or a video clip or a title or a fade, you can access those details with Inspector. For example, let's say I wanted to add a fade between two clips on the timeline. So I'll go to Effects, Video Transitions, and let's just do a Cross Dissolve. So I'll click the effect and drag it down and add it. Now you can see there's my effect. And by the way, I can do things like click and drag to adjust the length. But with the effect selected, over here in Inspector, I have information about the transition. I can say, hey, you know, change the length that way. Or I can even do it specific to frames. I can adjust the alignment. Let's say I wanted it to only fade out on the left and then hard start on the right one, or crossfade between them, etc. So anytime you're working with an effect, a title, or a video, an audio clip, you can click on them and access the details in Inspector. So for example, let me position my playhead somewhere else and then click on this audio, and there we go. I can adjust the volume, the panning, etc. So Inspector is something you're definitely going to use a lot. And then, similar to the left over here, we have this little arrow that expands settings and shrinks the timeline. So I can see all of the things available to me versus scrolling up and down when I'm in Inspector. Another thing with the edit page is you can click a lot of the areas and resize things depending on what you're doing. And then if, like me, you're using a laptop and an external monitor, if you go to Workspace, you can tell Resolve which the primary display is. It doesn't always obey that, but for example, I have it set to my external monitor. And then another really cool feature is Video Clean Feed. So it defaults to none, but if I go here and choose my laptop display, it will show me my active viewer on my laptop display, which is super nice. A couple other notes. On your timeline, if you want to add more audio tracks or more video tracks, you just right click, add track, or right click, and if it's audio, you get options like do you want to be a mono track, stereo, etc. So I'll do mono, and then you can see here this 1.0, that means it's mono. 2 means it's stereo. The default when you create a new timeline is one stereo track. But no worries, you can right click and change that to mono. When you create a timeline, for example, I'll hit Command N to create a new timeline, I can specify all of that right off the bat. You know, give me 11 audio tracks, make them all mono, etc. But then again, no big deal to add them later. Something else I need to cover is the timeline view options accessed by this icon right here. I always like to have audio waveforms enabled, so if you don't see audio waveforms here, you can click that and then you'll see them. And then I like to enable stacked timelines. With that enabled, I can have more than one timeline open and it'll show up as tabs. Let me go back in there. The video view options affects this right here. So I have film strip view enabled by default. I can do thumbnail or not have any video at all. But I like the film strip view. And then with audio view, I like to have this first one checked, which puts that waveform kind of in the center of the clip. And then track height, you can adjust this manually here by hovering until you get the double arrow and then clicking and dragging like that. Or I can go in here and adjust all of them. So if I had a bunch of audio tracks, I can adjust them all together. And an important tool I haven't shown you yet. Let's say you've got your layout configured just how you want it. You've drugged things around. You've got things sized correctly or different tools enabled or disabled. You can save that as a preset. Just go to Workspace. Layout Presets. And as you can see, I have several here. And just choose Save Layout as Preset. And then once you've done that, you can just go to Workspace, Layout Presets, and choose that preset, and then it will reconfigure Resolve exactly how you want it. So if I go to Workspace, Reset UI Layout, here's the default. And if I go to Workspace, Layout Presets, and choose my editing preset, there we go. And that wraps our review of the edit page. 
We will cover more about the edit page when we're actually cutting footage together, but this will get you going. Next, let's cover the remaining pages. We're gonna do this quickly because we're not using all of these in detail yet, and we'll cover them each in individual courses. Hey, and if you like my training, I highly recommend you check out my online film school, Write and Direct, writedirect.co. What's this about? Two reasons I did this school. Number one, to sidestep the monstrous cost of going to traditional film schools. Here's why. When you graduate from film school, I've done it, I know what this is like, you're faced with a sobering reality in Hollywood. Nobody's gonna hire you because you went to film school. They kinda wanna know what you've done. What are your credits in IMDb? What are you capable of? So after you graduate, you have to start making your own movies, but it's on your dime. And if you spent all of your money on school, you could be in trouble. Secondly, I teach you how to make a movie from development through post-production. I'm talking, besides screenwriting, I'm talking setting up lights, operating camera, gimbals, editing, color grading, everything, right? Now you might be thinking, hey, I just want to direct, and I get that, but here's the thing, when you're first starting out, if you can't afford crew, you can get held back really fast. I've seen this happen before to directors who don't know how to do it all. They get stuck depending on technical people. And as Robert Rodriguez says, if you want to be unstoppable, you got to know how to do it all. It's not just about being creative. You have to become technical. And so that's what Write and Direct does for you. Check it out, writedirect.co. Hope to see you there. And if not there, I'll see you on the channel very soon.